Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Jason here. In this video, we'll be going over what are the differences between flashing your ECU, installing a piggyback ECU, and a standalone ECU, as well as their pros and cons. Let's get right into it. So before we can dive into their differences, we need to first catch up on what exactly an ECU is. The ECU, or engine control unit, is a computer that basically reads data from a bunch of different sensors and uses that data to control different components on the engine, like the fuel injectors, throttle body, spark plug timing, and etc. in order to make sure that it is running as optimally as possible. It does this by using a lookup table, which is essentially an array of data arranged in a table that maps an input value to a corresponding output value. For example, if the input is, let's say, 10 pounds of boost, the output will be to inject a specific amount of fuel for a given RPM. These lookup tables, or maps, are what basically determine how your engine will run and is the main thing tuners will try to manipulate in order to extract the best performance out of your vehicle. Of course, I am massively oversimplifying and it's so much more complicated than that, but that's generally how an ECU works. Leave a comment down below if you want a more detailed explanation of how they work. Before we dive into the three methods, I should leave a disclaimer that this is a very general explanation, as the case differs from vehicle to vehicle, as well as the brand and age of the ECU. As per usual, always do your own research for your own specific vehicle and what goal you have in mind with it. Anyways, back on topic. From the factory, a lot of engines tend to be detuned by the manufacturer in order to maximize the reliability of the engine as well as to increase fuel efficiency and possibly leave room for a higher performance model so that not many changes would need to be made aside from a different tune. This detuned state leaves room for aftermarket tuners to maximize the engine's capability, especially on boosted engines, and in order to maximize that capability, they need to be able to modify the parameters on the map or lookup table of the ECU. There are three main methods of doing this, reflashes or remaps, piggyback ECUs, and standalone ECUs. Let's dive into what each one of them are. So what is reflashing exactly? When you flash or remap an ECU, you're basically editing the map tables or the parameters of the ECU, and this is usually a permanent job, unless you have a backup of the original stock map. Aside from that, the gains from this usually depend on the capabilities of your stock ECU. ECUs made today are quicker and much more advanced in comparison to ECUs from the early 2000s or even the early 2010s. Additionally, not every car can be flashed, especially if it is an older car. If you have a modern car, however, there are plenty of platforms you could use ranging from ECU Tech, Cobb, HP Tuners, Hondata, and many more open source tuning platforms like ROM Raider. These platforms usually flash the ECU through the OBD2 diagnostic port, meaning that cars before 1996 to 1997 aren't compatible with this method. Alternatively, some tuners are able to alter the stock maps by taking out the stock ECU and manually reflashing the ECU by connecting specific pins on the circuit board. This is also known as bench flashing, and it takes a significantly longer amount of time than the OBD2 method. However, it is the only option available for some exotic or European cars. Despite that though, this is still the cheapest method when compared with the other two we'll be discussing next. Some very modern OEM ECUs are very powerful, and aftermarket tuning companies can unlock extra features such as anti-lag, switchable fuel maps, and driver adjustable launch control, like with Cobb's Access Port and Burger Motorsport's JP4 tool. These features used to only be available on standalone ECUs, but now they're becoming more and more readily available on OEM ECUs, causing piggyback ECUs to become a little more irrelevant. Piggyback ECUs are basically ECUs that run in tandem with the stock ECU, and it alters the tune by modifying the sensor data received by the stock ECU. Modifying the sensor data causes the ECU to make adjustments, which then allows tuners to squeeze as much performance out of the engine. For example, let's say the stock ECU targets 10 PSI of boost, so it tells the boost solenoid to run at 20% duty cycle. This creates about 10 PSI of boost, which the ECU then reads through a manifold absolute pressure sensor or MAP sensor. The ECU receives this 10 PSI signal from the MAP sensor and adjusts the fuel and timing accordingly. 
When a piggyback ECU is installed, the map sensor is connected to the piggyback ECU before the stock ECU. The piggyback ECU changes that 10 PSI signal into an 8 PSI signal. The stock ECU reads that the pressure is only 8 PSI instead of the targeted 10 PSI, so it tells the boost solenoid to increase the duty cycle. The actual boost then increases to 12 PSI, and this data is sent to the piggyback ECU, which turns it into a 10 PSI signal for the stock ECU to interpret. The ECU reads that it is requesting and receiving 10 PSI of boost, despite it actually receiving 12. This is also how the fuel, timing, and other parameters are adjusted. Nowadays, piggyback ECUs aren't as common as they once were, thanks to the advancement in reflashing as well as standalone ECUs, but certain products like the Grady e Manage Ultimate are making a resurgence thanks to its ability to add additional injectors if necessary. However, piggyback ECUs only have so much parameters that they can adjust and a limited resolution, and often they aren't able to communicate with the CAN bus system on most vehicles. Additionally, this method requires splicing the stock harness, meaning that this is also irreversible. This is where standalone ECUs come in. Standalone ECUs completely replace the stock ECU for an aftermarket computer that usually has more inputs and outputs, a faster processing speed, and etc. When standalone ECUs first came to the aftermarket scene, they were often universal, not plug and play. Nowadays, many brands offer plug and play standalone ECUs that hook right up to the stock ECU harness while also allowing CAN bus communication. This allows us to use the buttons on the car to adjust mapping, boost levels, and etc. For example, we could use the drive mode selector, if available, to adjust which tune we want to run. With standalone ECUs, the sky and your wallet are pretty much the limit as there are incredibly advanced units out there on the market with tons of features that you might not even really use when building a regular streetcar or daily. As such, standalone ECUs are often reserved for high horsepower builds, unique one-off conversions, and racing applications as they are also incredibly costly. With that being said, let's go over the general pros and cons of each tuning method. So, reflashing an ECU is the easiest out of the three to perform, as it can be done directly through the OBD2 port or by flashing the ECU chip. It also retains full functionality of the factory gauges, sensors, buttons, OBD2 port, and etc. while also being the cheapest option. However, it is also the most limited in terms of adjustability and features, as it greatly depends on your stock ECU's technology. You're pretty much capped by your own ECU's limitations, and not all ECU's are compatible. With a piggyback ECU, it is easier to set up than a standalone ECU, but harder than doing a simple reflash, as it requires splicing of the ECU harness, which is of course an irreversible procedure, unless if you get an entirely new wiring harness. However, running a piggyback ECU in tandem with your stock ECU means you get to keep all of the functionality and features of your stock ECU, which may be important to some. This option is obviously more expensive than a reflash, but not as expensive as a standalone ECU, thus making it the happy medium between the three options, while also offering more adjustability and features than a reflash, but not as many as that of a standalone unit. Moving on to standalone ECUs, they are the most complicated to install, with the exception of plug and play ECUs, since they plug right in. If you get a universal one, you will have to reverse engineer the harness and figure out which pins go to which pin out which is time consuming and tricky if you don't know what you're doing. Additionally, they may have issues communicating with the factory gauges, buttons, OBD2 port, and etc. Although there are exceptions to this. As usual, do your own research and check if a specific unit will be compatible with all of your car's features before purchasing one, as it is also the most expensive option by a long shot, often ranging in the thousands of dollars. With this cost, however, comes a near infinite range of options and features that you might not even end up using. Stuff like boost by gear, advanced traction control, as well as a higher resolution when tuning the map tables on the ECU. This is the sole reason why so many enthusiasts choose them, despite them appearing to have more downsides compared to the rest if you look at this table. Again, and I cannot stress this enough, always do your own research and have a clear goal with your car. If you just want to increase your daily driver's performance on a budget, a reflash would be more than plenty. But once you start having goals of 4 digit horsepower or 7 second quarter mile times, you may start having to consider a standalone ECU. With that being said, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please do leave a like as it helps me out a lot. And leave a comment down below which one you're running or planning on running in your car. Lastly, do subscribe to keep up to date with more content like this as it helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe.